Hi, I'm Larry Vogel, and this is the Power Control Center. I've been with City Light over six years, but I've just started working with the Light Power and Pride Awards. When I took on this assignment, I thought I had a pretty good idea of how the Light Power and Pride Awards worked, but I found out there's a lot more to Light Power and Pride. This year, the program includes three separate awards, the High Voltage Performance Awards, the Safety Awards for Field Workers, and the new J.D. Ross Achievement Awards. The original Light Power and Pride Award is now called the High Voltage Performance Award. This year, more than 100 City Light employees were nominated by their peers for outstanding performance. All nominations were reviewed by a committee of 10 employees. They spent about two months checking references and tackling the difficult task of selecting the award winners. Now let's meet our high voltage colleagues. The first winner works right here at the Power Control Center. Unless you know the intricacies of power system monitoring, it's a bit difficult to understand just what a great job Jim Klotz has been doing. 18 years of experience with City Light's power system give Jim the expertise to design highly detailed substation diagrams for the new computerized monitoring system. Add to this his high levels of dedication and efficiency, and you've got a combination that's hard to beat. If you need to know about protective relays, Roy Hart is the one to ask. During his 30 years with the engineering division, Roy has achieved national recognition as an expert in these electrical protection devices. His hard work, dedication, and willingness to share his knowledge make a lasting contribution to City Light, other utilities, and indeed, everyone who uses electricity. Mary Mullen has been keeping track of vital details at City Light since 1964. Mary is a true professional and represents the highest work standards. Mary has made major contributions to the City Light Secretarial Manual, developed and coordinated secretarial skills training, and has become a living legend of organization and efficiency. How would you like to take care of nearly 900 cars, trucks, and other vehicles? That's what Denny Keyes and Martha Van Hise do every day. They're responsible for purchasing and maintaining all the cars, trucks, vans, cranes, and lifts we use at City Light. Their hard work and dedication keep us on the go with efficiency and economy. If you're looking for a hardworking, energetic, good-natured problem solver, call Dave Williamson. As a material supplier, he's actually invented tools on the spot to help his crew finish a job on time. Dave's proven leadership and sense of humor will be a real asset in his new position as electrician constructor apprentice. Two years ago, after six years at City Light, Tina Post became the manager of disbursements. This puts her in charge of the accounts payable and payroll sections. Under her energetic leadership, morale and productivity have vastly increased, and a long-awaited computerized accounts payable system has been completed. Teamwork is a valuable commodity in any project, and it's especially important when the pressure is on. Jim Lyle and Tony Hopkins are the hardworking team who make all the videotapes for City Light, including this one. Their high energy and commitment to quality have given City Light one of the best video production programs in the business. For more than 14 years, George Ashford has inspired cooperation, enthusiasm, and team spirit among his co-workers. His creative approach to problem solving has produced significant time and labor savings in both the preventive maintenance shop and the parking garage. His warm smile and easy sense of humor are infectious and have become a well-known trademark at City Light. Next time you get your paycheck, try to imagine what went into getting all the numbers right. Then think of Dick Ponshock on the job. He's an expert in payroll and a prime source of information for everything that affects your check. Keeping all those numbers straight requires exceptional organizational skills and a willingness to apply them every day. Dick's been doing it consistently for 29 years. Drury Wood takes the idea of customer service seriously. His commitment to do the best goes far beyond his excellent work as an energy conservation representative. Never one to stand back and let the other guy do it, Drury steps in when he sees a chance to help. He has personally raised cash and held food drives for people in need. Drury Wood is a one-man goodwill tour and an outstanding ambassador for City Light. Organized and efficient, accurate and helpful. These words give you a clue to the way Jeannie Hilliard approaches her job. She keeps track of payroll for the credit unit and has developed new and improved ways to keep close track of amazing amounts of detailed information. Her willingness to dive into a job and go the extra mile 
have earned her the respect of both peers and supervisors. Sam McJunkin's quiet leadership keeps his busy staff happy, productive, and on schedule with an incredible variety of graphics projects. Because you see their work everywhere, it's easy to take it for granted and forget the hard work and creativity behind it. From business forms and reports to posters and newsletters, Sam and his crew have put their mark on City Light's graphic image and truly keep us looking good. It's not hard to understand why safety is an important part of work at City Light. For our field crews, their health and their lives depend on everyone working safely. This marks the second year of our safety award program in the operations and transmission and distribution divisions. All field employees with perfect safety records for the past year are entered in a division-wide lottery to win additional days of personal leave. In the two years of the safety awards program, injuries and lost time accidents have dropped significantly for a tremendous savings to the utility. The third group of Light, Power and Pride winners have received the new J.D. Ross Achievement Award. This is the first year for the J.D. Ross Awards, and they recognize employees who have made outstanding contributions to the utility. Each of these winners has brought a direct benefit to City Light, resulting in an actual cost savings of at least $2,500. The way we operate the dams on the Skagit River directly affects fish populations. To balance our need for power and the fish's need for water, Jonah Sui developed a computer model that quickly calculates the impact of water flows on salmon and steelhead in the Skagit. Thanks to Jonah, we can now have the answers we need in a matter of hours instead of the two months it took without his model program. It's Don McElray's job to see that commercial customers get the electric service they need when they need it. His ability to work effectively with customers and with department staff enable him to find solutions when customers' needs don't match our normal procedures. As a problem solver and troubleshooter, Don is one of the best. His skill at getting things done quickly saves the utility countless hours of work. As a supervisor, Don is teaching his diplomatic skills to others, improving his entire unit's efficiency and productivity. Before PCBs were known to be hazardous, City Light and other businesses sold used PCB-containing transformers to a scrapyard for recycling. When the toxic effects of PCBs were discovered, City Light and the other businesses assumed responsibility for cleaning up the site. As project manager for the cleanup, Terry Kakita coordinated the first voluntary cleanup of a Superfund site ever approved by the Environmental Protection Agency. Usually, the EPA hires contractors to stabilize and clean toxic sites, and then charges the responsible parties up to three times the actual cost of the cleanup. By retaining control of the project, Terry not only solved the problem at a greatly reduced cost, but as a direct result of his work, City Light is now the nationally recognized leader in this area. Power schedulers at the Power Control Center sell surplus electricity directly to other utilities and some industries. These sales are billed by contract directly through the Power Supply and Planning Division, and it used to take an average of 15 days to get the bills out. P.J. Mellum, Brian Johnston, Patrick McNally, and Jim Hansen developed two new computer systems to track sales and get the bills out faster. Billings now take an average of five days, cutting the time by two-thirds and allowing City Light to earn extra interest on the money billed. How much? Thanks to P.J., Brian, Patrick, and Jim, in 1987 alone, we'll earn more than $25,000 in additional interest. Working as a team, eight employees from three separate units of the Finance Division found another way to save the utility a tremendous amount of money and interest. George Gaw, Joe McGovern, Brud Easton, Dick Koch, Randy Sable, Barbara Valenti, David Tran, and Darcy Mosey took the initiative to plan and carry out the sale of $250 million in new bonds and use the money to pay off older bonds which carried a much higher rate of interest. By managing to catch the market at the right time and pay off the expensive bonds with low interest bonds, they saved more than $600,000 this year alone. Projected savings over the next 20 years are in the millions of dollars. You've just met 29 outstanding City Light employees who represent excellence on the job. Congratulations to the 1987 Light Power and Pride Award winners.